guys, The Flash here for Premiere Basics, a weekly series where I teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. And today I'm gonna make you the fastest man alive. Okay, so first things first, we need some shots. Take a shot of you running fast on screen and keep the camera steady on a tripod. Then take a shot of the background as a clean plate. Then put on your running shoes, otherwise you will not be able to keep up with the rest of the tutorial. You ready? Okay, let's fire up Premiere Pro and drop our shots into the timeline. Put the clean plate on track number one and the shot of you running on track number two. Then duplicate the running shot by holding Alt while dragging and offset it a couple of frames. We're doing this because we want to create a trail behind us while we are running. This indicates our speed. Okay, now select the duplicate clip and head over to the effect controls panel. Set the opacity to around 90 and set the blend mode to darken. Then duplicate this layer. Then offset it again a couple of frames and set the blending mode to 80. And keep on repeating these steps until you are happy with the trail you get. You can alter the look of your trail by the amount of frames that you offset each of those tracks. Then we're going to select all of our duplicate layers, right click on them and nest them together. Then set that nest back to the darkened blending mode. Then go to the effects panel and look for the directional blur effect and apply it to this nest. Then set the direction to 90 and the blur length to whatever you find looks best. I'm going for 35. Then keep the nested layer selected and from the opacity property in the effect controls panel, make a circular mask. Now make the mask quite big so that it covers your subject and the trail. Then go to the beginning of the clip, set a keyframe for the mask path by clicking on the stopwatch icon and then go a bit further in time and reposition the mask so that it follows you and your trail. Keep on doing this until the end of the clip. Then of course, don't forget to feather it a whole bunch. And once done, it will look like this. Okay, once that's done, nest everything together and then speed ramp the nested layer. You can do this by right clicking on the upper left FX button on your track and then select time remapping speed. Then use control click or the pendle, which is P on your keyboard, to set some keyframes. Now the part between those keyframes will be the normal speed and all the other parts you can drag up to around maybe thousand or even more percent and that way everything will go super fast, then it will go real time and then it will go super fast once again. Now don't forget to place a ramp between those different speeds to make it more smooth. Now since I've shot everything in 120 frames per second, my speed ramp looks like this, which creates a cool slow motion shot in the middle. Now like you can see, my trail disappears when I'm doing my real time speed. Now how did I do this? Well, it's actually very simple. Go back into your nested layer where all of your duplicates are. Then on the moment where you want them to disappear, make sure to cut them one by one. Start with the upper layer and work your way downwards. Make sure to offset these and not cut them at the exact same time. Then right click on each of those endings and select the default transition which is a nice dissolve. Now once my feet touch the ground again, I'm going to let the clips start again. But once again with a bit of offset between each clip. And that's how easy that is. Now unlike you, Premiere Pro will probably go super slow once you've made this effect. So here's a quick tip. If for some reason the effect doesn't properly show after nesting or if Premiere gets super slow, then you can always render the sequence or you can export it to a QuickTime 422 file and drag it back into Premiere into that nested layer. That way all of the effects will be applied and the video file is way easier for Premiere to handle. If you want to spice it up even more, you can add some lighting to the trail. Now there are tons of free assets online like the ones from Storyblocks, Production Crate or the ones from Film Learning which I used for this video. And if you want access to even more video assets or video packs then have a look at our website premierebasics.net. We have a whole bunch of awesome transitions, glitches, earthquake presets or handheld camera presets which are actually super useful to use in this case since we've shot everything on a tripod and we want to make it look less steady and more handheld looking. Now, if you're interested in one of our video packs, then have a look at the first link in the description down below. We also have a whole bunch of highly rated classes about Premiere Pro, color grading, After Effects, and so much more, which you can also find on our website. Now, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, you may be wondering, Jill, why did we shot a clean plate? Well, as you can see, once we've applied extra elements or lighting, for example, to our video, it comes in front of our objects. So we can now take our clean plate, bring it above all other tracks, mask out these objects so that the lightning appears behind it. 
and this makes the final look way more realistic. I'll see you guys next week for a new tutorial, and as always, stay creative.